ain't so far from the bottom. Couldn't even see the top. All right. The next question is, how much time do you spend writing tickets? So it starts. Hey, folks. Having worked in QA engineering for, the, for five plus years, I found myself spending a ridiculous, a ridiculous amount of time writing tickets. Is it just me? Or do others experience this too? He goes on to say, in my humble opinion, in our industry, most of the time is spent communicating, talking to other people in QA and customer service, and writing up tickets with as many details as possible to ensure other teams can fix the issue. This is probably 70% of the day. The second thing is reproducing bugs and gathering evidence. I feel like the less time I spend, I spend writing long tickets, the more time I have actually spent improving my skills and testing. Sometimes it truly felt more like a documentation job than an actual QA role. What's your experience like? So, what do I think about that? Well, let's find out. So, what I'm going to say is, I don't spend a lot of time documenting tickets. Um, for me to, or, or I don't spend a lot of time um, writing tickets. When I find a bug and I identify it, how to reproduce it, I write up my defect report. It takes me about five, 10 minutes if it's like a lot to write. But I don't spend more than five to 10 minutes. Um, I would say that there is some time spent on investigating to find out what it is, like what, what the issue is. Um, but I don't, I think that, um, that's the job of QA. Like you're, you're, you're there to find bugs. You're there to report the bugs. You're there to validate they work. And you're there to um, like, like test cases, test plans. You're there to automate it. Um, so, yeah, uh, I don't know how it takes 70% of your day where you are talking to other people in QA and in customer service. Like if, if you're spending 70% of your day, I didn't start the timer. Look at that. Uh-oh. Well, we'll start it now. Oh, well, get extra time. So if you are spending, if you're spending 70% of your day talking to people in QA and talking to customer service to write up tickets with, with as many details as possible to ensure other teams can fix the issue. Why do you get like, why are there so many bugs that are being found after the fact? and not um, during the development cycle. Message! And if you're a QA engineer for, the, um, for five plus years, why aren't you the one reporting the bugs yourself? Like, why do you have to talk to all these people? If, like, and what type of system do you have? Like, can't the, um, can't the customer service representatives log the bug and then you go and you check it to investigate? So, I'm kind of confused by the issue that is being, um, like by the question here, I I don't have that experience. Um, when I, when I have buggy software, I might spend a lot of time writing tickets, but there are a lot of tickets. They're not like I'm spending time on one ticket to, um, it's not like I'm spending a lot of time on one ticket to document that ticket. And like, um, I like, Do you have a template that you use to document these tickets? Um, 
I generally have a defect template that I follow where I'd put the, um, a, a quick summary of the issue, the expected results, the actual results, the, the URLs, if it's like on a website or an API, um, the steps to reproduce, um, the environments affected and screenshots if, if, if possible. Right. So, but that doesn't take me that much time because I've, I've done a thorough research and, um, I, I don't, I mean, this might be like a, a humble brag, right? But, um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, stop, you're too much. You're too much. So I don't, I don't have a lot of, um, defects that are making its way to production. Um, I don't even have a lot of defects that are happening with the, um, like inside of the development process because, um, that communication that you're spending so much time doing with your QA and customer service representatives, uh, I do it with my developers, right? Message. Talk to my developers. So before they, like, I try to catch them before they even start implementing things like, Hey, this, this is the test plan that I'm envisioning. This, this is what I see that I'm going to do. I'm going to test this, 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 this here. Um, looking at that, uh, what do you, first of all, what do you think about that test plan? And so, oh yeah, like, um, okay. So now they plant a seed in their mind, right? So it's, it's very strategic. <laughs> I'm very strategic with it. What I'm doing is I'm planting a seed in their mind to say, okay, this is the things that QA is looking for. So not only helps me on this particular story that we're, we're creating, that we're working on, it also helps me for the future so they can have an idea of how the QA engineer thinks, right? Sharing that information is vital. Getting that communication as early as possible. Even earlier, like, are you involved in the um, story plannings, the refinements, all of that, where you can ask questions so they can see the QA minded questions that you're asking of what you're going to be testing so that you don't end up spending so much time, 70, 70, 70% 70 of your day talking to other people in QA and customer service. So you can write up bugs with as many details as possible. No, talk to your developers early on in the process. Get, um, get them to, and then you also ask them for feedback. Like, oh, like, do you think I'm missing anything in, in my test plan? They're going to say, oh yeah, you know, there can, there's, there's, there's this that we're also um, doing. So you might want to look at this here and look at that here. And, and now you work together and you come up with a plan where you can win. Just saying. Just saying. The only thing I'm going to do right now is winning. All right. So let us move on. If you enjoyed the fascinating information shared in this video and you want more, be sure to hit the subscribe button to Tech Coach Ralph to be notified for new videos.